Okay, so this lesson is all about transformations. Basically, taking this shape on our lovely y and x axis. Oh, we're not going to so make sure we always label our axes. X going across and y going up. Remember, x is across. So we've got our lovely shape, a triangle. It could be any shape. It could be an L shape. It could be a square. It could be it could be anything. But often you'll find uh, triangles are used. And what we need to do, we need to do some different things to this triangle. So the first thing we're going to be asked to do is move the triangle. Um, or we might be shown another picture and be asked to then do something. But basically we're going to be asked to move the triangle or translate the triangle by a certain amount. We might be asked to move it two left and one down. Okay. We might be asked to move it 10 left and one down. The way we note that down, the way we note down translation is like this. We do the x at the top, the amount of moving x at the top, and the amount of moving y underneath. Okay? So this is called a translation. So we're going to be told we want to move it by 10, minus 10, x, and minus 8, y. Okay, really straightforward. There's three points on a triangle, so you just translate each point. So here's the trusty pen. We start, we see that this point's at 4, 4. So we're going to need to move it. Minus 10x, so 4 minus 10x, going to take us 2, minus 6. So I'm going to go minus 6, my x value for this point. But I also need to move minus 8, 8, so 4x again. Minus 8 is going to take the minus 4. So that point will now be at minus 6, minus 4. So let's mark that on. Okay, next one. I'm going to move this point, which is 4, 9. Now I can just look and think, well, that point is just going to be 5 across from, from this point. And you're right. It is going to be 5 across from this point. So we just know that that will be at minus 4, minus 1. So we can mark that on. And we can see that again. If we really want to, we've got 4x. It's going to be the same as, sorry, 4x. Sorry, it's not 4x this time, it's 9x. Sorry, it's going to be the same, isn't it? Minus 10 is going to take us to minus 1. And the y value is the same, it's still 4. So it's going to be 4 minus 8. It takes to minus 4. And I've got this point, so we've got 10 on y and 9 on the x. So again, 9 minus 10 is going to take us to 1. And then 10 minus 8 is going to take us to 2. So it's going to be here. Okay? And then we just join them up. Join those points up, we're going to get our triangle. It's difficult to join things up on this board, but you can see that we then get our fancy new triangle. So that's been translated. On 10, minus 10, minus 8. And translation is that simple. Okay, the next thing we might be asked to do, we might be asked to enlarge the triangle. Okay, we might be asked to enlarge the triangle. So, how would we do that? So, let's say we're asked to enlarge it by a factor of a half. That actually means shrink it, that means draw it by a half. But it depends where we decide to do that from. So we might be asked to enlarge the triangle by a factor. So we're going to enlarge by scale factor a half through. We might be asked to do it through zero two through the point zero. So through here. So this is our point of enlargement, right there, 0, 2. And it's actually fairly straightforward. What we do, we look again at each of the three points. So this point, let's look at this one. Now, it's 4 away in the x direction and 2 away in the y direction. We just need to halve those values. So instead of going 4 away and 2 away, 
Yeah? So they're going four away and two away. We go two away and one away. So the next new point is going to be here. Okay? And then again, so with this one, it's nine away and it's two away. So it's going to be one away and it's going to be four and a half away. So it's going to be, take four and a half. It's going to be here. And now the top point. So this one is eight away up and nine away along. So it's going to be four away up and four and a half away along. So we end up with six and five. So we end up with it there. So this is our enlargement by scale factor a half. So you just take the distance, all the points are away, and times them by the scale factor. So if it was two, if I was enlarging it by two by this point, this was nine away, I'd suddenly have to do 18 away. No, as you can see, it's too big for my particular graph. But essentially, that's how we do it. If I was shown this, like this, and I was told to find that, I didn't know where the centre of enlargement was. That's even easier. You just get a ruler, and you draw some point lines from each corresponding, going through each corresponding point. Okay? So, and then through the one point, and through the other one. As you can see, they all converge. They all converge on the point where it has been enlarged. So that's how you do an enlargement. And that's how you find out an enlargement. And obviously you find the scale factor of enlargement just by seeing how much you need to times the original one by to get the old one. So whether it's a half, two, four, whatever it may be. So that's enlargement. Okay. Uh, another thing we might be asked to do is rotate. So we might be asked to rotate it. And again, that might be about a certain point. Often the origin. So I'm asked to rotate it by 90 degrees about the origin. So basically, again, I'm going four along and I'm going four up. Okay? If I rotate that 90 degrees, okay, four along, four up, I'm going to rotate that through 90 degrees. So if you can imagine I drew a line like that, that then needs to be 90 degrees. So it's actually going to end up at four minus four. Yeah? going to end up spinning around and being in the same place. What about this one? That's not going to end up at 4 minus 4. That's going to end up at minus, that's going to end up at 4, 9. That's going to end up at minus 4, 9. Because that's going to have been shifted all the way up here to 9. And this point again is going to be shifted all the way over to here. Again, this is going to stay the same, but this is going to move and come along to 9. So I'm going to get minus 10, 9. And I'm going to get my shape there. Most rotations you'll see will be about the origin. So that's it, rotated 90 degrees. So basically you just turn it 90 degrees and move it to this plane, keeping this point really pretty much the image of where it was before. So it would be like that. Be rotated again through another 90 degrees. Be careful when you're doing these rotations. But essentially just turn it and then move it along. So the last one would be a reflection. Now I'm out of colours, so I'm going to have to do the reflection in black again. So let's reflect this in the x-axis. So it's just a mirror, so each point's going to be equidistant. So it's four away here. So it's going to be four away here. Be around like there. Again, four away here. Going to be four away here. And ten away here. So going to be ten away here. Can't bother using a ruler. It's going to look 
roughly like that. Okay. So, okay. Right. so now, what, now what about if I need to reflect it in a line like this line? Y equals minus X. Well, again, we do the same thing. We would trace down from each point until we get to the line. So there we go, all the way down. So in this case, we've moved minus, we've moved eight down. And then we need to go across because we need to this, the way it would reflect would then be to come straight across and act line like that. So we then move minus 8 across. So that's that point. So that's point 1. And that's point 1. Point 2, we're going to move down a long way. And we move down, move down from 4 all the way down to minus 9. So we move minus 13. So we have to come back across and then across to 4. So we're going to have that there. Okay, and now what about this point? We're going to come down from 10 to minus 9. So we're going to have to go minus 9 to minus 10. So we're going to have it there. And then our reflection is going to look like that. Okay, so if it's a line that's basically at 45 degrees to it, you're going to have to move down and move along, down until you get to it, and then along, instead of down, and then straight down, as it would be for a line that's parallel. So that's all the different types of movements, the translation, transformations we can have. So what you need to do, there's some questions in the booklet. What we'll do is we'll do one practice question now where I will show something that has been moved and we'll, we'll see how we'd have to specify that. And then we can go and practice some questions. Okay, so now we've got a question on these transformations. We need to know how we get from A to B. And it's gonna be more than one transformation that gets us there. There's also several, several different ways of doing it. There's no one right way of doing it. There's lots of different ways, as long as that what we do gets us from here to here, it doesn't matter how we do it. So, first thing to do, let's look at the two shapes. Now to me, this looks like this, just that the orientation looks like it's been flipped over which implies to me a reflection. So let's try reflecting it in the x-axis first off. So we come down three here, so we have to come down another three here, again with here. Come down five, so we have to come down five, come down 11-ish, meant to be 11 anyway. So we have to come down 11, Okay, and then there's this point, which is roughly, which is at 7, and yeah, 11. So there are points, I need to draw that shape. Excuse me while I turn my back to you. Basically, like I said, there's no right or wrong way to do this. Just experiment about with a couple of different things. I mean, I could have reflected in the line x equals 2. Sorry, y equals 2, if I'd really wanted. It just... It's slightly easier for me to do it in the line y equals zero or the x-axis. Because it just just a bit more natural. So there's our reflected shape. Doesn't quite look long enough for some reason. Very hard to draw on these boards. So I made it a little bit too far. Okay, so there's our reflected shape. We'll call that a dash, because that's part of our way there. So now it looks like we've got an enlargement going on, doesn't it? It looks like this has been enlarged by a scale factor of probably some sort of fraction, because it's smaller. So now to get from this shape to this shape, I need to do an enlargement. So we need to find out center of enlargement. So let's do that. Remember, we just join up like for like points. So we'll just go through this point. One. Okay. And then I'll do this point over here. You only need to choose three points. You don't need to do every single one because that'll just reconfirm when your line converges. You're just wasting time by doing more than one point. 
So there we go, those cross there. So hopefully the other one will go through there, otherwise we're a bit off. And it does. Okay, so it looks like it's about, because this is very inaccurately drawn, it looks like we're at about six, about minus a half, six. So our central lines is minus 0.56. So, there you have it, we've now got from here to here. And what have we done? Well, what we've done is you reflect in y equals zero, which is basically the x axis. And then we enlarged by a scale factor, which we haven't worked out yet. So the scale factor, we need to see how big this is compared to this. So this side goes from two to three and a half. So it's sorry from one to three and a half. Yeah? So it's one from to three and a half. This one goes from three to eleven. So this one's seven. So this one's three and a half long. So one to four and a half. So it's three and a half long. This one's seven long. How do I get from three and a half? Sorry, from seven to three and a half. It's half of it, isn't it? I times it by half. So it's been enlarged by a scale factor of one half through point minus 0.56. So you're reflecting the y-axis, so the x-axis, y equals zero, and then enlarged by a scale factor of half through the point minus 0.56. And that's how we get from here to here. And it's that simple. The only way to get good at these, as with lots of maths, is to practice. So there's some practice questions in the book, and just practice, 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 and soon it will become second nature doing these transformations.